Welcome to the Female VC Lab podcast. I have Heather on the line today. Heather, in one line, give me your name, your title, and the name of your fund. <laughs> Barbara, my name is Heather Hartnett. I'm the CEO and founding partner of Human Ventures. Wonderful. So what inspired you to become a venture capitalist or an investor? Well, Human Ventures um, is an early stage venture firm, and we, we focus on pre-seed to Series A investments in the consumer space, mm -hmm. um, and largely in the companies that we call uh, the human needs economy. It's healthcare, huh. wellness, future of work, community-based businesses. We feel that the human needs have not been met, and technology has outpaced that human condition for quite some time. So now, how are we using technology in service of those needs versus taking away from them? You know, what inspired me to become a VC? The yes. decision makers at venture capital firms with more than $25 million in assets under management are 88% male. It's True. staggering. <laughs> and so for every female founder that's pitching an investor right now, it's a high probability that that VC is going to be somebody who doesn't understand some of those areas of, of consumer behavior that we just talked about. What inspired me really was around that. It was, can I add value to the ecosystem by finding founders who are really serving needs that investors haven't traditionally been investing in? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you talked a little bit about your thesis, but can you go a little bit more deeper into your thesis and what was the motivation behind the thesis, your uh, investment yeah. thesis for your fund? So there's two parts really. One mm -hmm. is that a large part of what makes a successful startup ecosystem is the concentration of founders building together and helping one another. No founder ever does it alone. And we've seen this now for years and years that in a very fertile entrepreneurial kind of ecosystem, it's just, you get more flywheel in those early days, you get more mm -hmm. traction. Mm -hmm. So one part of our thesis with human ventures is can we invest in people who are fast growing and ambitious and also interested in growing alongside other people. So we're investing in a portfolio of companies and founders who are helping one another. And we, that's Powerful. a big part of like the, the human need there. Mm -hmm. And then the, the category focus. And so we take into consideration where consumers are spending their time and attention. And right now, this is pre-pandemic, but certainly post-pandemic healthcare, but more importantly, wellness. Mm -hmm. Our healthcare system right now wellness is really is huge. Yeah. Yeah, and mental I mean, health, and you think about food, you think all the different aspects of wellness. All the, yes, food and Bev, where is that going? Even our environment, our relation to our relationship yes. to our environment. It's a very broad sector, but you're starting to see founders build massive businesses in these areas. So another big area is around your livelihood, right? The future of work. What people are spending, yeah. changing their career an average of three to five times now in their core working years. So that means you have to have an ability to change and different skill sets are required to be adaptable. 100%. Because tech so, is only getting heavier. The tech is getting heavier. That's what I call it. It was more deep tech, AI, blockchain, AR, you know, more and more very technical things happening. So how do you adapt to that as a worker? And then how do you adapt to that as a consumer? And then how mm -hmm. do you adapt to that as a company? But you touched on something about work and a lot of people are talking kind of about post pandemic. A lot of people have gotten remote work now, and a lot of people are coming out of traditional work and going more into remote work. How do you see that trend following in relationship to your thesis? Do you see that getting more and more prevalent? Yeah, uh, definitely. And I think the things that we took for granted in a physical work environment, the interactions, the social interactions, the community mm -hmm. that's built now have to be very thoughtfully integrated into culture. So as a, rem a remote worker, you have to be able to take feedback in certain ways that mm -hmm. have context around it, know how to relate with your fellow coworkers outside of Zoom. Or if you're on Zoom, what, how are you learning about them and learning about the things that aren't just related to the agenda of the meeting? Mm -hmm. And these, I think during the last 18 months were, um, these things were brought to light that if you don't put some attention on, on those core qualities of being what makes us human, then your business suffers. So I'm, we're seeing new companies that are addressing those problems in really unique ways. I'll I'm give sure. you an example. Yes. One company that we invested in called Murmur mm -hmm. and they're a shared agreements platform. And so mm -hmm. it's as simple as coming up with your values or policies, uh, you know, parental leave, all these agreements, but you have shared input from all of the stakeholders within the corporation. 
And they're seeing really interesting traction because everyone's had a hand in, in making that culture right from the beginning. Right. And then they're signing that agreement and it's just better communication. No, and, and that's a powerful thing. If you think about from a cultural side in the work environment, that becomes very powerful because then you feel like you had a say in, in what that looks like. Yeah. So yeah. And you're speaking the same language. So mm -hmm. much of, of conflict in the workplace happens because the just the vocabulary is not agreed on. Very true. What are you currently learning or listening to or reading these days? Oh gosh, I consume so much information. I'll tell you the, the biggest thing on my mind right now, I've been obsessed with personality tests. We look for kind of the misunderstood founder. We look for founders who traditionally might've been overlooked. What are the attributes and qualities of founders that you can really point to so that the pattern recognition of the past is not applied to the future mm -hmm. value being created. And so for me, I just actually came off of an Enneagram course and oh, Enneagram wow. is a personality test that I'm fascinated by. There's nine personality types that have been defined from a system that dates dates way back. And, and it's just it's all data points, but mapping people. And I love that. That's great. So in two years, when we're talking, this is the bonus question. Everyone knows <laughs> this is the bonus question. In two years, when we're talking... How do you see venture capital or investing having changed or evolved? I think capital is becoming a commodity. So I think mm. that the investors who will really shine will be the ones who understand how to add value besides just the money, right? Mm -hmm. It's the values created post investment. And I think there's an opportunity to innovate in these categories that we were talking about and Absolutely. give access to hands-on resources and programs, events, strong networks. Mm -hmm. And that's what will create the, the successful startups to be able to build in these, in these areas. One big change that's happening is in the emerging manager space, smaller funds, but that the fund managers are really creating a meaningful community to be able to, to invest together and give companies a big leg up against the, the larger firms. More traditional. That's good insight. That's a good insight. So Heather, how do people contact you? I think the best way, which I really do respond to fastest is Twitter. So I'm at Heather Hartnett. Anyone Twitter. can DM me. Yeah. If you really want, if you have a quick there, question. That's there are where VCs on Twitter. We, we all are on there. <laughs> people thought <laughs> I was crazy when I said that. I said, you can find venture capitalists on Twitter. Oh, Twitter <laughs> is the best place enough. to map <laughs> yeah, relationships. Well, you know, the, the cool thing about Twitter is people asking questions and we may even ask questions. Sometimes I ask questions on Twitter. And then if you can respond to the questions and you it respond in a thoughtful way, that can get you some attention as opposed to always just like, here's my pitch. And you said about building community, a part of building community is like offering some interesting insights. So yeah. it's, oh, this is an, if this person has an interesting insight. That's, that a really good, that's a good point. It's a really good point that people are so used to projecting with their agenda out into the world. Mm -hmm. But if you actually are giving some value out first, that's what builds that reciprocity yeah. with relationships. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank you so much, Heather Hartnett from Human Ventures. Human. Thank v you, Barbara. Appreciate it. For being our guest on the Female VC Lab podcast.